Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will tell you about an action movie from 2020 titled Army of One. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Dylan is a homicide detective, heading out for a relaxing vacation with his wife. As he dozes off in the passenger seat, he finds himself thinking back to his most recent case. Dylan and his partner Frank have been tracking a pair of high-profile suspects. They have tracked the suspects to a secluded location, and since they are known to be armed and dangerous, Dylan and Frank are waiting for backup to arrive. While standing by, they hear a female voice scream from inside the house, forcing them to take immediate action. Upon entering, Frank finds a female body on the floor, arms still bound at the wrists. Dylan hears a gun go off in another room, and is simultaneously attacked by a man in a white bunny mask. The bunny knocks the gun out of Dylan's hand, however, Dylan quickly fights him off. He throws the masked assailant down, where he is impaled by a protruding piece of metal. Dylan rushes upstairs to assist Frank, and finds him sitting on the floor, with a gunshot wound. As he kneels down to assess the injury, Dylan encounters another masked suspect, this time wearing a large panda mask. The panda slashes at him with a large knife, stabbing him once in the midsection. Before he can inflict any further damage, Dylan manages to pick up his firearm and end the confrontation. Dylan then wakes up abruptly, still nursing his ribs. His wife, Brenner, greets him warmly, and they joke about her choice in snacks. Anxious to get away, the couple has planned a camping trip, well off the beaten path in the backwoods of Alabama. They drive a little bit further before encountering one of the locals, who doesn't seem like he's used to seeing tourists. Brenner responds by showing him one of her fingernails, and he takes that as his cue to move on. The couple eventually reaches their destination, and after setting up camp, they set out on a hike. While enjoying their beautiful surroundings, they lose track of time, and end up caught in a heavy rainstorm. They make their way to what appears to be an unoccupied vacation cabin, and upon finding the front door unlocked, decide to take shelter there until the storm passes over. Dylan removes his wet shirt to dress his wound, and they take the opportunity to get a little more comfortable on the couch. After finishing their workout, Brenner does a little exploring, and comes across a door hidden behind the bookcase. In the adjacent room, they find drugs, an arsenal of firearms, and a supply of homemade explosives. Now realizing that it is anything but a vacation home, they go to leave, but get captured before they can do so. Brenner is tied up on the floor, duct tape covering her mouth. And Dylan is secured to a chair, where he is forcefully interrogated by Butch and two of his brothers. After confiscating their vehicle and belongings from the campsite, Butch sees no further use in keeping the couple around. He shoots both Dylan and Brenner, before having them dumped in a remote area of the woods. Butch and his brothers are part of a cult-like faction of a larger cartel. Their family business, led by a woman, appropriately dubbed Mama, sells drugs and firearms to other organizations. And because their town is so small, they operate with relative impunity, encountering little resistance from the local law enforcement. Aside from Mama, the women amongst them are essentially held captive, forced to cook, clean, and provide children for the family. Meanwhile, Brenner regains consciousness in the ditch where she was left. Although Dylan was killed, Brenner survived the attack. After mourning her husband's murder, sadness quickly becomes rage, and she uses a leftover axe to start crafting a wooden spear. Brenner then returns to the cabin, where she finds one of the brothers on the porch. Surprised to see her, he attacks Brenner with a small knife, however, he stands no chance. Brenner knocks him down with her weapon, then thrusts the sharpened end into his stomach. After finding the rest of the cabin empty, she sets off to look for the rest of the family. Brenner finds Jesse and Earl working in the woods. Hiding patiently behind a tree, she waits until they separate, then ambushes Jesse when he goes to relieve himself. After knocking Jesse unconscious, she then approaches Earl, who is still unaware of her presence, and smashes a glass jug over his head. Earl manages to wrestle his way on top of her, but Brenner deftly breaks his arm, before stabbing him multiple times in quick succession. Still determined to locate the rest of the group, Brenner wounds Jesse's leg before sending him off. Knowing that someone will come looking for him, she also uses the gasoline to create an explosion loud enough to be heard back at the family's house. The plan works as designed. Butch sets out to investigate, eventually finding Jesse, and Brenner hides in the bed of his pickup truck, which leads her back to their house. Now realizing that Brenner is far from your average tourist, the family sets out to investigate her background. Brenner Baker, formerly 1st Lieutenant Brenner Baker, of the U.S. Army's 75th Ranger Regiment, was the first ever female to complete Ranger training. The 75th Ranger Regiment is an elite combat formation within the U.S. Army Special Operations Command. While serving overseas, Brenner had been captured and held as a prisoner of war, 
and after leaving the military, she became a contractor for a private security firm. That night, the family sits around a campfire, mourning Earl's passing. After having a little too much to drink, Butch makes his way out to the barn, where Brenner is waiting. They exchange blows, and Butch grabs a chain from the wall, swinging it wildly. They both go to the ground, but Brenner proves to be too skilled of a fighter. Powered by the desire to avenge her husband's death, she strikes Butch repeatedly, before delivering a blow to the neck, ending the fight for good. She then retrieves her wedding rings, which Butch had been wearing around his neck. The following morning, Brenner sneaks into another area of the compound, where multiple women are locked in a metal cell. She breaks the chain and frees the three of them, leading them past the snoozing guard. The last woman, however, sabotages the getaway by waking him, and he immediately opens fire, shooting the second woman in the back. The last woman, Emily, dodges the gunfire, and takes cover while Brenner subdues the shooter by throwing a knife. Two others join, pursuing Brenner and Emily into the woods. They catch up to them rather quickly, but Brenner kills the first man using part of the environment, then turns his shotgun on the other. Quickly running out of family members, Mama is forced to call for reinforcements. Several mercenaries are summoned from a nearby town, and they join the hunt for Brenner and Emily. As Brenner stops to get water from the stream, Emily is found by two of the mercenaries. Brenner uses one of them as a human shield, then shoots the other when he stops to reload. The town sheriff, Hobbs, also arrives on scene. Unaware of everything that has happened, he initially suspects Brenner as the aggressor. She is quickly redeemed however, when a third mercenary shows up and shoots Sheriff Hobbs in the leg, before also being eliminated by Brenner. After applying a tourniquet to his leg, they carry him as far as possible, but they're forced to move on when they hear the remainder of the mercenary team tracking them with dogs. They hide Hobbs where he won't be found, then cross the river so their scent is harder to track. On the other side of the river, the women flag down a bypassing vehicle, and find that it's another police officer. Relieved, they quickly hop into the SUV, and proceed to leave the area. Instead of driving them to safety though, the officer turns out to be an informant for Mama, and she delivers the women back to the family's compound. Brenner is taken to a room and tied up, while Emily is forced to go back to her normal duties. Excited by the prospects of a new woman in the house, one of the brothers then enters the room, planning to have his way with Brenner. As he approaches, Emily comes to the rescue, stabbing him with his own knife, then freeing Brenner from the restraints. Still determined to finish what she had started, Brenner then goes through, and clears the rest of the house. She eliminates the last two mercenaries, one with a knife, and the next with a choke hold. Next, Brenner proceeds to the kitchen, where she finds the last two remaining brothers. Brenner makes quick work of them, then goes back to check on Emily. Before she can do so, Mama returns to the house, with her youngest son, Jake. Brenner tries to tell her that it's over, that everyone else has already been eliminated, but Mama continues holding Emily at knife point. Jake stabs Brenner in the leg, distracting her long enough for Mama to kill Emily, before disappearing. Three months later, Mama is sitting in front of the house, rocking slowly in her chair. A shot is heard from a distance, and the final objective is fulfilled. With a satisfied look on her face, Brenner emerges from her sniper hide, and walks back to the jeep. As the movie ends, Sheriff Hobbs is shown getting a phone call from Brenner, confirming that he has made a full recovery. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel to see more.